Friends, we are talking today about the coming of the Lord, and I, I think of that that old hymn, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory of the Coming of the Lord, and where we really need to see this is in the Word, and, and Matthew 25 is a great place to see this. And what we have are three parables that are all about the coming of the Lord and final judgment. So here we go. The first one is a parable of the ten virgins, and it has to do with a wedding where our Lord is the bridegroom, and he's coming, and, and the word goes out at midnight. There's a cry, here is the bridegroom. Here's the bridegroom. And then what happens is you have these ten virgins, but uh, some of them are in the group we call the foolish ones. They're not really prepared. They don't have oil in their lamps. Um, and then there are the rest that are the wise, and they're prepared. Now, what happens is the foolish want to want to get the oil from the wise, and the wise say, go and buy, buy some at this point. So those who were ready, you know, they went in. They're the, they're the wise ones. And then it says the door was shut. See, there's coming a time when the end will come. Our Lord will return with his angels. The door will eventually be shut. And we have to be aware of that. We have to be ready. So he says at the end of it, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Okay. Now the second parable has to do with a little different situation. Here a man is going on a journey and he calls his servants and he gives to them certain talents you know, think of that as, as something to be invested in some way. So these talents, one person gets five, another person gets two, another person gets one. So they don't all get the same thing to invest. But the idea is we're all supposed to use the talents that God gives us and invest them now, because now is the time of investment and opportunity. And there's another time coming when uh, we have a return of the one who gave us the talents. And so we have the one with five and we have the one with two. And, you know, they've each, you know, they've put this to use in some good way. And they made, they made more from what was there. You can think about this as discipleship. You can think about it as um, not just making new disciples, but growing people and and helping people actually to be involved and engaged in mercy and some kind of mission in some way, right? Use those talents and it creates more for the kingdom. But then there's the person who has only the one. So of the the one who had the five and the two, they, they invested and did things with their talents, made more, and, and they get, you know, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But for the one who had the one, he hid his talent, didn't do really anything with it, and just says, well, now here, here, it's back. I give it back to you, all right? He, and why? Because he says, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, whoa, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So it sort of insults him. He said, the reason why I don't have more for you, you know, I haven't really done anything, it's you, it has to do with you and your character. And um, here, look, the, the master, he doesn't fall for this. He, he answers back. He says, you wicked and, and slothful servant, lazy. So you were wicked. You were lazy. That's why you didn't do anything, because you were lazy and wicked. See, you knew that I reap where I didn't sow and, you know, I, where I, did, I gather where I didn't scatter seed. Well, then you should have at least take the talent that I give you and put it, you know, Put it somewhere like in the bank and get interest from it. Uh, and then you could give it back with interest. But you didn't even do that. See, if that's what you really thought, that, that I'm such a hard man, at least you would have put out that talent and gotten interest on it. But you didn't. What, you, what you're really doing is showing you didn't want to do the work. Right? And, and so the, the end is, well, outer darkness for that, that one. Now, the final parable is probably the most famous and we have the sheep and the goats and their nations standing for nations and people groups. And, and God is sorting it out all at, at the end. He's a king at the end in this parable. And the way you are on the right side of him, 
was when you took care of the weak, the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the, se the sick, those in prison. He says, when you did things for them, you did it for the least of these. This is what we need to be doing in our churches, you know, caring for the weak. And the others, you know, who did nothing for the weak, they also, look, you didn't do it to me then. I was there. My person was there in the face of the weak that needed help, and, and you didn't see me. And so, once again, wow, eternal punishment is talked about then for those who didn't do right. Boy, do you get this? You see what we need to do? We need to be fruitful for the Lord. Father, you've given us gifts that we need to use for your glory. We commit ourselves to that today, and we thank you for your mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks.